In today's video tutorial, we're going to make it snow in Adobe Muse. Yay! In today's video tutorial, we're going to make it snow in Adobe Muse. Ah! Oh, ah! Oh, to my eye! To my eye! In today's video tutorial, we're going to create a snow effect in Adobe Muse. Yay! Hey, what's up, users? This is John at Muse for You here to help you build awesome websites without code. And in today's video tutorial, we're gonna make it snow in Adobe Muse. Uh, so I have a sample site here. And by the way, my eye is okay. That was just, uh, you know, that snow can be kind of dangerous. Um, but yeah, I have a sample site here. And as we can see, we have snowflakes uh, coming down the website. Um, here I have the text, text, let it snow. And we have a YouTube video. Uh, this is a GoPro YouTube video of snowboarding that I grabbed off the, off of YouTube. Um, I'm not affiliated with GoPro, I just saw this video um, and it's really cool. So there it is and it's just uh, a few guys snowboarding there. So I, I thought it fit the theme of the site and I, I get to show how to add YouTube video uh, in your Adobe Muse website. Uh, so we can get started. We're going to be using the particles.js widget for this. And we're also going to be using a website uh, called misha.studio slash snowflaker uh, to get the snowflakes. Um, so here in Adobe Muse, this is what the website looks like. We have the responsive cover image that I used for uh, the browser there for that image in the browser. Then we're using the particles.js widget for the snowflakes. We're using the browser centering widget for the text that says let it snow and the font smoother to, to make the font, fonts look good. Uh, so all these widgets can be found at museforyoushop.com and I'll show where to access it at the end of this video tutorial as well. Um, so we'll get started. I'll just create a, a new site. So I'll go to file, new site, and I'll click on OK and I'll double click on the home page. Uh, so the first widget I'm going to bring in is the responsive um, cover image. So yeah, I'll just type in cover image in the library panel. If you don't see the library panel, you can go to window and click on library. And here I'll click, hold and drag and place onto my Adobe Muse website. So now I have the widget there. Um, I do want to find an image uh, that fits the theme. So I'll go to unsplash.com unsplash.com yeah, and I'll type in snowboarding let's see if we get that image so we might use a different image actually so I like this one here um, it's kind of an action shot and it looks pretty cool so I'll download by clicking this download button yep right here um, and then it'll download to my downloads folder so I'll put that in my folder here I have a folder called images Okay, so here's the image. So I'm gonna check how large the image is. Let me look at this view. So this image is 960 kilobytes. Um, I do wanna resize this image. So I'm gonna right click, open with preview. And I'm gonna to go to tools, adjust size. And um, it's a pretty good size. The largest I usually wanna make my images is 2,400. The largest I wanna make my images is 2,048 pixels wide. So here I'll just change it uh, to 2048 and it actually reduces it by quite a lot by 84.9%. Um, so I'll click OK. I find 2048 pixels in width is plenty big. Um, a 27 inch iMac is 2560 pixels in width. Um, so this is good and Adobe Muse uses these standards as well. Um, so here I'll close the image and we can see, yeah, the size is now 657 kilobytes, which is really good. Um, or yeah, it's pretty good for an image. I could even bring it into a compressor to make it smaller. Um, and if I didn't want to do that, I'd just go to compress.jpg. So let's just do that. Let's just go through the whole process. Um, I didn't want to spend so much time here with the image, but I'll just drag it in. And there we can see it reduced it by 41%. So I'll download the image goes to my downloads folder and I'll bring it right in here. And there we have the image. It is now 390 kilobytes, which is a nice size um, for a website image. All right, so I'll go back into Adobe Muse. I'll go into the responsive cover image widget, click on the widget options, and then I'll click on select an image. I'll click add file. And I have the images folder here. So here we have this, uh, this image and it has min next to it. So I know that it's the compressed version and the size is 390 kilobytes. So I'll double click. And just like that, I have my image. So I'll go to file, 
preview page and browser and there I have my image of the snowboarder and I'm going to leave that black overlay because I'm going to add text over this image. Uh, so now I want to add uh, snowflakes. So I'm going to go to a website uh, misha.studio and I'll actually type it in uh, misha.studio slash snowflaker. Okay, and here you can kind of customize your snowflake. Uh, so for the stroke width, I'm going to make it a little bit thinner. And for the sub branches, I'm going to I'm going to do you can add a lot of sub branches or a few. I kind of like yeah, this one right here. This one's nice. So here it says you can save as SVG. If you're in Chrome and Firefox, you can save it as an SVG. I'm going to save it as a PNG because I find it works better for this example. So I'm just going to right click, save image as, and I'll save it in that folder with the other image. So I'm just going to call it Snowflake. Okay. And now if I open that folder, um, it's in this folder. And what, what I like about saving it as, as a PNG is that it makes it transparent uh, right away. When I saved it as an SVG, for some reason it had a black background and that didn't work too well for my example. Um, I do need the background to be transparent so that when the snowflakes are following, it doesn't have anything behind it. Um, so there I have my snowflake. And the other thing I want to do is go to tools, um, adjust size. And I want to see the size of the snowflake. It's 800 by 600. Um, I could crop it, let's say like in illustrator or berm.net um, but I'll just do like what I'm going to do is type in a hundred because I'm going to have each snowflake be um, kind of reduced in size so it's going to be a hundred by 75 and this will make more sense as I'm working with the widget but we don't have to change it to the size we could um, but before it was 800 by 600 so I just want to see the proportions that I have to enter into the widget so if I make the widget the width 100 the height has to be 75 so that the snowflake isn't like smushed or anything. Um, and I'll show a better example of this as I'm working on it. Um, so there I have my snowflake. So now I'm going to bring in the particles.js widget uh, full screen. So I'll click, hold and drag. And I just typed in particles.js in the library panel. And I'll bring in the particles.js full screen. Uh, so here I want to go to particles. Um, I want to for the particle shape. I want to say image. Uh, for the select for the image, I want to add file, click on add file, and I'll select the snowflake for the image width. I'm going to say 100 and the height. I'm going to say 75. Um, and that's kind of the example that I was showing before. Um, yeah, I can make the image smaller so the the width and height should be uh, proportioned to how I kind of looked at it in the preview section there. Um, so already we have uh, snowflakes. So if I go to file preview page and browser, um, we have snowflakes, but they have particles and stuff and lines. So let me continue editing in the particles.js. Uh, so for the size, I'm going to say 25. So we want a bit larger snowflakes. I don't want random sizes. I don't want little or small snowflakes. I want them all to be the same size. And um, actually, you know what? Let's do random size. That might look cool. So we have sm we'll have smaller snowflakes and larger snowflakes. So for the minimum size, we can set a minimum size. I'm going to set a minimum size of 10. And um, I don't want par uh, particle size animation, so that's fine there. For the line link, I don't want a line between the snowflakes. For the movement, I want them to go down, so I want to say bottom here. So the snowflakes will come from the top to the bottom. And everything else here is good. I want it to move out, I don't want it to bounce. Like I don't want it to hit the bottom of the browser and then bounce back up. So we just want it to move out of the browser. Um, the interactivity, I don't want any interactivity on hover on click, so I don't want the snowflakes to move around if the user's moving their mouse or clicking. Um, and that's it. So we have already have the snowflakes, so I'll preview again. And just like that, we have snowflakes. Looks good. So they're moving a bit fast, so for movement, I'm going to change the move speed to 3. It was at 6, so I moved it, I changed it to 3. Um, and let me look at the size again. So the particle size is 25. Let me say 40 for the particle size um, and the minimum size. Um, we'll leave it at 10. I want a few larger snowflakes in there. So there we go. Perfect. That looks really nice. So the, the largest size was 40 and the minimum size was 10. So these are smaller ones are at 10 and then you have in between sizes, sizes as well. Uh, so we have nice snowflakes there. The next thing I'll do is in, say, let it snow across. So I'll just create some text right up here. I'll say, let it snow. I'll change the text to this uh, black hockey italic text I have here. 
and I'll say 100 for the text size and let's widen out this text box here and I'll center it in the center there. Okay, so I'll place it right here at the top and now I'll bring in the browser centering widget because I want this text to be right in the center of the browser. Okay, and we see the graphic style name here for this widget is center one. So I'll click on the text. I'll go to my graphic styles panel. And if you don't see your graphic styles panel, you can go to window and click on graphic styles. And here I'll create a new graphic style by clicking on this icon that looks like a piece of paper. So I'll click there and I'll double click and I'll say center one. So now this text will be in the center. So let's see how that looks. There we go. And I do want to change the color of this text to white. So I'll double click and I'll just change the color to white in the tools right up here. All right, so we're almost done. Um, I think that's basically it. So we have it, let it snow. And I want to bring in the font smoother uh, to make that font look a little bit better. So I'll go to my library panel and type in font smoother and we'll bring in the font smoother light. And just like that, we've made it snow on our Adobe Muse website. Looks good, let us know. So we wanna put a little video up there in the corner. Uh, let's say I've made a video of snowboarding. I'll just go to YouTube. So here I have the video. I typed in snowboarding GoPro. And I'm gonna start the video at 328 because in the beginning of the video, they're kind of just talking and things like that. But at 328 is when they start to really kind of snowboard. All right, so there I have the video. Um, this is a, a GoPro video. So I just wanna copy this uh, this right up here, this, this code. So anything after the V equals, I wanna copy that or I can click on share and then I can just copy this link or anything after the slash here. So I wanna hit copy this or highlight it, hit command C. Actually, it's easier if I go up here. Anything after V equals, so I'll hit command C and I'll go into Adobe Muse, I'll go to Object, Insert Widget, Social, and I'll click YouTube. And I'll bring that right in there. I don't want it to be that large, so for the width, I'm gonna say 300 right up here. In the toolbar, I'll just type in 300. And then go into the widget, and for the video ID, I'll say Command V, and it'll paste in that video ID, and then I'll hit Enter. And then for the start, start time, um, the start time is 328. So three minutes and 28 seconds. In the widget, the start time goes in seconds. So um, three minutes and 28 seconds is 208 seconds. So I'll enter that in there. And I just calculated, so 60 times three plus 28 equals 208. Um, so that's it. I don't want any annotations or show related. And looks good. I do want to allow full screen and I don't want the controls to show actually for this. So now, um, oh, and I do want it to autoplay um, there. So when the browser, when the user opens the browser, the video will start playing. Playing. So I'll preview in the browser. And uh, we have to pin it to the top left because we're using the responsive cover image that the website is below the cover image, but I can have it pinned or I can have it show right up here uh, by having it pinned. So I'll click. And then here in the pin options, I'll pin it to the upper left by clicking this button here, just like that. So now this will stay at the top of the browser and I'll preview. And just like that, that's not auto playing. So let's see, why isn't it auto playing? Okay, it wasn't auto playing because we had and T at the end and that wasn't part of the video ID. It was gonna be um, more of a timing thing within the video ID. Um, so the video ID ends at zero. So I'll hit enter and I do want to allow full screen and autoplay. And I'll go to file preview page in browser. And just like that, we have the video here in the corner playing. We have snowflakes coming down. We have let it snow and the website can be below here as well. And the video would stay pinned up there. Um, so that's it for, you know, making it snow in Adobe Muse or creating snowflakes. And I'll pause this here. Um, so it was a lot of fun. We covered YouTube videos, uh, snowflakes, um, centering things in the browser and adding a responsive cover image to the background as well. So I could do something like this and that image would be responsive within the browser. And then once I scrolled that image or the website would appear below. Um, so that's it for this video tutorial. Uh, we used quite a few widgets here. Um, we used the responsive cover image widget, the particles.js widget, the browser centering widget and the font smoother widget. 
Um, all these widgets can be found at museforyoushop.com. And here you can click on the pop-up and here you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. Or if you'd like to subscribe with PayPal, you can click here and subscribe with PayPal. Uh, the individual widgets are here, like the browser centering. Here you can click add to cart to purchase individually. Or again, you can get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. Um, and here we have the responsive cover image, the particles.js widget, and the font smoother will be somewhere here, right here in the font smoother. Um, so those are the four widgets we used in this tutorial. Um, again, you can just go to museforyoushop.com and either subscribe or you can purchase the widgets individually. Um, and yes, you do get all the widgets if you subscribe for $39 a year. Um, the only widget that's not included is the Muse Morph. It's kind of its own separate thing. And I tried to make that pretty obvious here by placing it uh, here in the menu. It's kind of on its own page. And also in the FAQ section, I do mention uh, that the Muse Morph is kind of its, its own widget there. But all the widgets here, and if you click on widgets, you can see all the widgets as well. Those are all in the subscription. All right, so that's it for this video tutorial. Again, I do this to help you build awesome websites without code. Uh, if you like this video tutorial, you can subscribe below. Also in the show more section below are links to other resources and links to museforyoushop.com. I'll also leave a link to the Snowflaker uh, website that I used here uh, to create the Snowflake in the resources section below. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you.